If you could, what's the one thing you would change about your parents? Nothing. They're perfect. Just ask them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I would have wanted mine to be less surfacey in our conversations. Uh -huh. That may have had as much to do with you as with them. Maybe. God, it sucked them both getting sick at the same time. But also weirdly romantic. In a lifetime movie sort of way. I didn't realize until those last months that they weren't disinterested. They were just always waiting for me to give them a sign it was okay to talk about the things that really mattered to me. Talking honestly is important. Yeah, it is. Paul, I already told you, I can't come down to the restaurant for dinner tonight bec because I already made dinner myself. It can't be as good as what you could eat here. I'm a very good cook. You've told me so on many occasions. Put your very good food in your very good Tupperware. Put your very good Tupperware in your very good fridge and get your very good ass down here. No, I've got a meeting with a huge prospective client in the morning and I need to prep for it. Who? I can't say. How huge? How huge is what? Brian's prospective new client. Who is it? He won't say. Well, give us a clue, male or female. I've got to go. My dinner's getting cold. Bye. No, wait, wait. Travis is working tonight. He says you still haven't called him. Is that what this is about? We gave you his number at least two weeks ago. He is literally sulking. Just come down and have dinner. I'll sit you in his station, and I guarantee he'll provide the dessert. <laughs> I told you, I've got to prepare for my meeting. Fine, fine. Break the boy's heart. Maybe turn him off of older men forever. I'm hanging up now. Bye. Eating load sucks. Yep, it sure does. He means well. You make them all promise to watch over me? <laughs> no. They just care. I know. I know. <sighs> Paul, I told you, I've got work to do. Uh, this isn't Paul. What? <laughs> God, I'm sorry. It's David Taylor. Is this Brian? Yeah, uh... A friend of mine has been calling and calling and wanted me to join him for dinner. I, I thought it was him again. Is this a bad time? No, no. Uh, I'm sorry. Do I know you? Okay. Well, <laughs> this is awkward. It seems your in-laws and... Oh, oh, God. <laughs> You're the guy that Franny and Carl mentioned. Yeah, I was starting to think my parents got confused and... The architect. Yeah. Google him. Let's see what it looks like. Um, I'm sorry. I um, went to get in touch. I've just been crazed. Is this a bad time? I mean, I I understand having work to do. No, no. I I, I just uh, I didn't want to go out to dinner. I I mean, I do have work to do, but uh, it can wait a bit. Try another. So look, I realize this is pretty weird, and trust me, I, I don't make a habit of letting my parents try to fix me up. <laughs> I'm not judging you. Try Facebook. Actually, I think they took my breakup harder than either of us did. They really like my ex, and, and I think they've always been more comfortable with me being gay when I'm in a relationship. But, you know, that part they understand. Right. Right. Anyone who manages to have no photos of themselves online is hiding something. And I just managed to obliterate the first directive of all the dating sites. Don't talk about your ex. Social misfit. Um, you weren't really talking about him. Witness protection program. You were contextualizing an awkward call, which you get props for making in the first place. You're good. If I were a celebrity in trouble, I'd definitely want you doing my PR damage control or just hideously unattractive. Um, damage control is just a very small piece of the job. Try LinkedIn. 
I prefer building up my clients and educating them how to avoid ever needing damage control. An ounce of prevention? Yeah. Kind of like you making sure you've designed everything in a way that the building won't fall down. <laughs> yeah, except I mainly do interiors. Oh. Guess you're just gonna have to meet him. So look, I, I know my parents and your in-laws met well, but I don't want you to feel on the spot here. They told me you lost your husband. Uh, yeah, yeah, um, just a little over a year ago. I know. I know, I love you too. So much. When do we give him the extra morphine? The uh, hospice nurse said we'd know. How? Don't tell us. I'm sorry. But I can only imagine. So if you're not really ready to be dating, I mean, I wasn't ready to date anyone for like six months and I was the one who ended my relationship. Uh, no, no. Um, I'm done some dating, I'm ready to date. No, I just meant, if you're not, if you, if you just want to maybe pursue a friendship, you know, that's good too. Yeah. How about, how about we do this? How about we meet and see what it feels like it wants to be? Sounds good. Uh, so do you want the safety of a quick drink or do you want to throw caution to the wind and go for dinner? Um. I can commit to dinner if you can. <laughs> I mean, after all, you you do come highly recommended from people I love. <laughs> so do you. Of course, the people I love have never met you, and the people you love have never met me. Uh-oh. Maybe I should rethink a sight unseen dinner. I promise I am not a serial killer. Oh, okay, wait a minute. Hold on. That never even entered my mind. Now I'm worried. <laughs> It's interesting you haven't given me the same, uh, same assurance. I am not a serial killer. What are you saying, baby? Hmm? You ready for extra morphine? Hmm? Love you, son. We always have, and we always will. And now, you're not going to have any more pain. It's okay, baby. It's gonna be just like you want it. <laughs> hey. You remember our first official date? Hmm? Not the night we had drinks after we met at the art opening, but following Saturday? You remember? Hmm? Close your eyes. Just close your eyes. Mm, think of that perfect spring day. Central Park. We agreed to meet at Bethesda Fountain. I got there first, of course. I was sitting on a bench and... You walked over and you gave me a quick kiss and then you knelt down to tie your sneaker. Blue Converse. <laughs> and then you looked up and you saw the book in my hand. Time in the River. And you laughed and you said that you thought you were the only one in the world who still read Thomas Wolfe. <laughs> and we talked. 
Which we talked about everything. Books and Thomas Wolfe and... And then we walked. <laughs> we wound up walking all over that damn park for like eight hours, remember? <laughs> Showing each other our favorite spots and places. Laughing. Eating ice cream. That was the most glorious day of my life. And then when we suddenly stopped talking and we really kissed, We'll see each other again. Okay. Friday night, eight o'clock. Perfect. I've got a favorite restaurant. Let me see if I can get us a reservation. I'll email you. Sounds good. I'm looking forward to this. Me too. Said drinks. Too late now. <laughs> Brian? David. <laughs> <laughs> nice to meet you. Yeah, you too. <sighs> oh, wait, did you think that guy was me? Well, okay, look, I didn't have a clue as to what you looked like. There's not a photo of you anywhere online, do you know that? I mean, there's nothing on LinkedIn, nothing on Facebook. Well, years ago I had a stalker and it spooked me, so I, I try to keep my photo presence as discreet as possible. Ah, oh. But you looked. Oh, yeah, didn't you? Oh, yeah, before I even made the call. Uh -huh. <laughs> no, wait, you agreed to this date without ever seeing a picture of me. Well, like I said, you came highly recommended. Follow me. Have you eaten here before? Uh, no, but I've heard about it. You're in for a treat. Uh.